Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. After the full patina of the James McCabe heritage last week, this week a watch that will develop its own genuine patina over time, the Borealis Oceanaut 200 meter dive watch. Now if you follow me on Instagram, at Just One More Watch, oddly enough, you'll see that I've been out and about with this one. I even took it Christmas shopping with me last week. I've been really enjoying it. A big watch, but fits really well. Great case shape, really conforms to the wrist. All right, let's flip the camera and get into the review. So the Borealis Oceanaut then. This one comes in a nice little PU leather brown travel pouch. I'm kind of over watch boxes these days. These little pouches offer a nice alternative, genuinely useful if you're taking the watch out and about. Overall, pretty impressed by the packaging. It really complements the watch. Now, 12 month warranty only which is a bit of a disappointment. You'd be expecting a 24 month warranty, I think on automatics, but Borealis for some reason have chosen to offer only 12. This one available in three different dial colors, either black, they do a blue or they do a green and either date or no date, all with the NH35 movement. Uh, the date models feature the date at about the 430. Nice to have that choice. Same price regardless, 399 US dollars, which I don't think is too bad, given that it's a, an unusual finish on this watch. Really nicely done handmade leather strap there as well. So dimensions and specifications to begin. We'll get some good close-ups. Have a look at this interesting case and the interesting strap, uh, loom shot, movement accuracy report, wrist shot, all the usual good stuff. Now this one, it depends where you measure it, it depends how big it is. It's kind of 41 mil across the bezel, but if you're going to take it at its widest point from this kind of extended crown guard here, it's 43 and a half mil. So on paper, kind of quite wide, 50 mil lug to lug as well. So again, quite large, 22 mil on the lug width and about 13 and a half mil thick, but it wears much smaller than those dimensions would initially suggest. This one weighs in at around 120 grams on the supplied leather strap. Now the leather strap is 22, 22 all the way along. Very nice indeed, I have to say, handmade leather. It's got um, nice levels of stitching, a couple of big keepers, and what I would best describe in Scotland as a muckle buckle. Look at the size of that thing. That's actually 27 and a half mil wide. Now patina, I mentioned that on the intro. This is a little bit of the patina on this aluminium bronze. It came supplied that way, all perfectly acceptable. This watch is not gonna look like this in 12 months time. Now aluminium bronze, just a different version of bronze from tin bronze or zinc bronze, used because it tends to be harder and it corrodes less. So as much as this one is gonna patina up with time, it's gonna take a while doing so. I think really, really interesting. They've done it very, very well. You can see it's not a consistent finish on the side there. It's already started to develop a little bit of character. I think this one will look lovely in a couple of years time, especially if you're getting it wet with some, some salty water. So it is a dive watch. We've got 120 click unidirectional bezel, very nice notchy action, no back play at all there, which is good. And we've got a screw down crown, again made of aluminium bronze with the, the B, the Borealis logo on there as well. We'll get the usual pop when I undo it of the Seiko NH35 movement that this watch contains. So pretty standard in these micro brands, the NH35, a movement that I've got a, a lot of respect for. Uh, hacks and hand winds, if you pull it out there, it hacks. Back in the first position, you can feel a, a nice hand winding action there as well. Obviously no date in this instance, but very easy to, to adjust the time. And it's also been pretty accurate. I'll pop up our movement accuracy report early today. There we go, coming in at just under minus 11 seconds a day. I found these Seiko NH5s run slow. The Myotas that I've experienced over this year have tended to run a little bit fast. The Seikos tend to run a little bit slow. This is, however, my new winder, so expect a little bit of variance. I think the winder itself runs a little slow than, slower than the Wolf that I had been using previously, but pretty good result, as always, from the Seiko. And look at that case back, very nice indeed. Always nice to see a company taking extra care and attention on the little details like the case back there. Beautiful mermaid etched in there. Just advertising the automatic, the NH35, 200 meter water resistance and sapphire crystal. I should note that it's got an anti-reflective undercoating on there, the sapphire as well. And it is slightly domed. You do get a nice little bit of distortion as you go around the edges of the watch. Zoomed in on the dial then, and it's a sandwich dial. So we've got the upper dial just with the printed Borealis 
Oceanaut Automatic 20 atmospheres. They've kept that nice and clean. But underneath there, all the indices and the numerals, Arabics cut out at 12, 3, 6 and 9, are all on a lower, fully loomed plate. Now, a pop-up, a loom shop. The loom is great. The hands are fantastic. The dial itself is pretty good. Not as good as the hands, uh, but very nice indeed. Borealis uses Swiss-made RC Tritec C3 Luminova, so the good stuff. And there it is on my 7-inch wrist. Now, those dimensions, I would normally slightly bulk at a watch this size, but it wears really, really well. I think it sits nicely. A little bit of curve on those lugs, meaning that the 50mm lug-to-lug looks really good on the wrist. As I said, I've been enjoying this one out and about a lot, the Borealis. I think a nice design. The buckle, oh, a little bit too large. And there's a question mark over whether or not you should be wearing a, a dive watch on a leather strap. How are you going to get this one wet with that leather strap? Now, Borealis do offer a rubber strap for only $25. Looks pretty good. I would definitely be specking one of those if I bought this. I think you should be able to transfer that bronze buckle over. It looks like it'll go with the rubber strap, no problem. I think a black rubber strap or possibly even an orange rubber strap on this one and you'll have a fantastic, very unusual looking watch, ideal for the summer. So what am I going to moan about then? Not much to be honest. Apart from that question of the leather on a diver, I've really enjoyed this thing. Nice handset, nice little bit of scalloping there and love that red tip, just adds a splash of colour. I think it'll look beautiful with a couple of years on the wrist this one, should be reliable. Really just the 12 month warranty, it would have been nice if that had been 24 and 399, well you know if you can get a deal on one of these, I think a great watch, very very, bit of a surprise this one, I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I have, but really nice, looking forward to sampling some more Borealis timepieces in the future. So there you have it, the Borealis Oceanaut. I think a pretty good deal for 399. I'd definitely be specking a rubber strap on this one though, getting it wet as often as possible and watching it develop its own character with time. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.